Hi guys! In this video, we'll be looking at solution for velocity in simple harmonic motion. Using the solution for velocity in simple harmonic motion, solution for acceleration in simple harmonic motion, and then we'll finish with the summary. In this video, we're going to go through the solution for velocity in simple harmonic motion. We recall that we can find velocity as the rate of change of displacement with time. So we can write this as velocity v is equal to a change of displacement, delta x, divided by a change in time, delta t. We can write the solution for displacement using the following equation. Displacement x is equal to amplitude a times the cosine of angular frequency omega multiplied by time t. And now to find the rate of change of displacement, we need to differentiate the equation for displacement. And this is how we find the velocity, by differentiating x with respect to time. This will give us an equation for the velocity of a body undergoing simple harmonic motion at any moment in time. So the velocity of a body undergoing simple harmonic motion v is equal to the rate of change of the displacement of the body with time. So it's equal to minus the amplitude of oscillation times the angular frequency of oscillation times sine of omega times t, where t is the time elapsed. Now we can plot this velocity solution on a graph of velocity against time. So this is a minus sine graph, as we see in the equation. Velocity is proportional to minus sine of omega times t. This velocity time graph is consistent with the gradient of a displacement time graph. So here we have a displacement time graph of x against t with a certain amplitude a. And here we have our velocity time graph. And you can see that at the point of maximum gradient on the displacement time graph, we have the maximum velocity of the body. And at a point of zero gradient in the displacement time graph, we have a point of zero velocity. Let's do an example. A mass on a spring oscillates with an angular frequency of 5.2 radians per second and amplitude 0.8 meters. What is the velocity of the mass after it has oscillated for 10 seconds? Step one is to write the equation for the velocity of the mass during its oscillation. We know that velocity is equal to minus amplitude times angular frequency times the sine of angular frequency times time. Step two is to substitute values into the equation to find the velocity of the mass after 10 seconds. So velocity is equal to minus amplitude times angular frequency, which is minus 0.8 meters multiplied by 5.2 radians per second. And we then multiply this by the sine of the angular frequency times the time elapsed, which in this case is 10 seconds. And we find that velocity is equal to minus 4.104 meters per second, which is equal to minus 4.1 meters per second to two significant figures. By expanding the angular frequency, we can also write the velocity equation in terms of frequency of oscillation. So here's our velocity equation. Angular frequency omega is equal to two pi multiplied by frequency, and therefore we can rewrite velocity in terms of frequency. So velocity is equal to minus two pi times frequency times amplitude times the sine of 2 pi times frequency times time. We're now going to look at how we can use the solution for velocity in simple harmonic motion. We can use the velocity equation to determine the velocity of any object undergoing simple harmonic motion. For example, a pendulum in simple harmonic motion. Let's do an example. A student starts swinging a pendulum at an amplitude of 20 centimeters. After 16 seconds, the pendulum has completed five cycles. What is its velocity after 23 seconds? Step one is to write down the formula for velocity. Velocity is equal to minus a times omega times sine of omega t. We next need to find the time period, which we'll call capital T. We know that after 16 seconds, the pendulum has completed five cycles. So to find the time period, we divide 16 seconds by five which is equal to 3.2 seconds. Next, we need to recall the formula for finding the angular velocity. Angular velocity omega is equal to two pi divided by time period capital T. So now we can find the angular velocity of the pendulum. So omega is equal to two pi divided by 3.2 seconds, which is equal to five pi divided by eight radians per second. Next, we can substitute in values to find the velocity. So v is equal to minus the amplitude, which we're told is 20 centimeters, or 20 times 10 to the minus two meters, times five pi divided by eight radians per second, times sine of this angular frequency, times 23 seconds. 
And what we find is that the velocity is equal to minus 0.36 meters per second to two significant figures. We're now going to solve for acceleration in simple harmonic motion. We recall that we can find acceleration as the rate of change of velocity. Acceleration a is equal to the change in velocity divided by a change in time. We know that we can write down the solution for velocity in simple harmonic motion. The velocity is equal to minus the amplitude of the simple harmonic motion times the angular velocity times sine of omega times t. In order to find the rate of change of velocity, we need to differentiate the equation for velocity. So acceleration is equal to the differential of velocity with respect to time, which is dv by dt. And this gives us an equation for the acceleration of a body at any point during simple harmonic motion. The acceleration a is equal to the differential of the velocity of the body with respect to time, which is equal to minus the amplitude of oscillation times the angular frequency of oscillation squared times the cosine of the angular frequency omega times time. And what we can see is that this is the same as the defining equation for simple harmonic motion. So we've defined acceleration as being equal to minus omega squared times amplitude times the cosine of omega times t. And displacement, remember, is equal to amplitude times cosine of omega times t. And we can easily see that acceleration is equal to minus omega squared times x, which is the defining equation of simple harmonic motion. Let's do an example of finding the acceleration. A mass on a spring oscillates with an angular frequency of 5.2 radians per second and amplitude 0.8 meters. What is the acceleration of the mass after it has oscillated for 10 seconds? Our first step is to write the equation for the acceleration of the mass during its oscillation. And this is that acceleration is equal to minus omega squared times amplitude times the cosine of omega times t. And now all we need to do for the second step is to substitute values into the equation to find the acceleration of the mass after 10 seconds. So we're told in the question that the angular frequency is 5.2 radians per second and the amplitude is 0.8 meters. So let's substitute these values into our formula. And we know that we want to find the acceleration of the mass after 10 seconds. So we substitute in 10 seconds for time. And therefore we find that the acceleration is equal to 13 0.31798 meters per second squared, which is equal to 13 meters per second squared to two significant figures. By expanding the angular frequency, we can also write acceleration equation in terms of frequency of oscillation. So the acceleration is equal to minus omega squared times a times cos of omega times t. And we know that omega is equal to two pi times frequency f. So let's substitute this in to our acceleration equation. We now have 2 pi times f in place of omega. And let's tidy this up a little bit. So we have acceleration is equal to minus 4 pi squared times f squared times a times cosine of 2 pi f times t. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap or bye smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.